Hello and welcome to another lightning demo. My name is Talon Miller. I do technical marketing here at Redis. Today we're going to implement a solution for fraud detection using Amazon SageMaker and Redis Cloud. Let's dive in. Before we dive into our use case of fraud detection, it's worth mentioning that you can use Redis Cloud and SageMaker together for more than just fraud detection. SageMaker is a great service for building, training, and deploying machine learning models because it contains all of the managed infrastructure, tools, and workflows you'd want when working with machine learning models. Redis Cloud has best-in-class sub-millisecond latency and high availability, linear scalability, and a huge variety of data structures to work with, which makes it a great data store for use cases that implement machine learning. More details on that as we dive into the challenges with fraud detection solutions in production. Fraud detection is a complex process, and it has an incredible impact whether it's working as intended or fails to flag a bad actor. So we're working with very high stakes. The first of a few reasons why large financial services organizations choose Redis Cloud is its five nines high availability. This means these organizations can have their fraud detection solutions up and running 99.99% of the time, which is imperative. The fraud detection solution needs to flag or decide whether a transaction or activity is fraudulent or not and take action within seconds, if not milliseconds. Failing to do so can lead to significant losses. And I mean significant, like B, as in billions of dollars of losses reported each year because of fraud detection. Fraudsters or bad actors are evolving every day and are moving in tandem with digital banking transformation, discovering innovative ways to steal or fake customers' identities. Two challenges that yield both unhappy customers and substantial loss, false positives and latency. False positives is when a system flags a legitimate transaction by the user as fraud. I can imagine that could have happened to you before. It happens commonly when you travel internationally, for example. Effective machine learning algorithms such as Random Cut Forest and XG Boost are effective in combating fraud. But as fraud evolves, a multi-layer approach needs to be in place in addition to continuous model learning. So why latency? Well, latency translates to speed or lack thereof. So mature fraud detection solutions commonly use in-memory stores like Redis Cloud so that fraud can be flagged ASAP. In this video, we'll go over the solution, architecture, and prerequisites you'll need to build this along with me, and then go over the steps of implementing the solution. With that said, let's jump into what the solution looks like. First, organizations can adopt either a rule-based solution or ML-based solution, or a combination of both to mitigate fraud detection in real time. Rule-based solutions typically enforce a set of hard-coded rules to determine if the transaction is fraudulent or not. For example, blacklisting a set of IPs using location-based rules, like my traveling example, or using a purchase profile information to determine if a user has purchased in a particular product category before. Let's dive into how our solution built on SageMaker and Redis Cloud integrates to provide the best of both worlds when implementing rule-based and ML-based real-time fraud detection systems. Amazon SageMaker comes with pre-built ML algorithms like the ones I mentioned earlier, XGBoost and Random Cut Forest. This is one of the benefits of SageMaker as it reduces the amount of development time we would spend on our solution. Redis Cloud is a fully managed service and will use advanced data structures such as search, JSON, and time series to handle the various data types we'll be working with, like JSON documents, indexing data while persisting for faster complex SQL-like query executions with search, and persist the ML inference results data in time series format to build visualizations. At inference time, the ML engine needs to quickly read the latest feature values from the online feature store and use them. Based on the real-time features, the ML model will score the transaction. This makes building an online and real-time accessible feature store on Redis a strong architectural design choice. We'll use S3 for our historical data sets of credit card transactions, Lambda functions process transactions from the historical data sets and invoke the two SageMaker endpoints that assign anomaly scores, and classification scores to incoming data points. End users, whether on mobile or web, invoke Amazon API Gateway REST APIs for predictions using signed HTTP requests. Kinesis is used to capture real-time event data. 
Another Lambda function reads the stream and persists transactional data to the search and JSON data structures in a Redis Cloud database. Another Lambda function further persists the prediction results to the Redis Cloud database as time series data for real-time analytics. Or another optional Lambda function can pass the prediction results via Kinesis, which persists the data to an S3 bucket so that QuickSight can consume this data for analytics. Now that you know how we're going to set it up, let's get going on our setup. And if you would like to follow along, I'll put the GitHub repo in the description of the video. Now let's go over the prerequisites. First, an AWS account and a Redis Cloud account. You can start a 14 day trial with Redis Cloud from the AWS marketplace or directly on our website. For our purposes though, we'll need a database larger than the free tier. So I'm going to create a flexible subscription with two databases, one with JSON and search and the other with time series. You'll also need the AWS CLI setup. Lastly, Docker and Docker Compose should be installed to run containerized applications and AWS Lambda functions. All right, let's dive in. To start off this implementation, I'm going to break this section up into six parts. First, we're going to set up the infrastructure. Second, we're going to train, test, and deploy our SageMaker models and endpoints. Third, we're going to build and deploy Lambda functions. Fourth, we're going to set up Amazon Kinesis. Fifth, we're going to turn on our solution and see the fraud detection in action. And finally, sixth, we're going to visualize our solution in Grafana. First, we're going to start in the AWS console. Go to cloud formation, create stack, select upload a template file, choose file, and select the template file from the GitHub repo. Give your stack a name, select the correct configurations like IAM roles, and then create it. This will stand up a lot of our resources like our SageMaker Jupyter Notebooks that contains our models and S3 buckets. It can take some time for that CloudFormation stack to stand up. Once it's complete, we're going to navigate to SageMaker and get into our second section. Enter JupyterLab, and we're going to execute each of these cells one by one. There's a lot to go through here on video, but each step is detailed in the notebook for you to understand how we're training and testing our two models, XGBoost and Random Cut Forest to eventually do some supervised learning and use that data to evaluate how our models are performing. I would love to spend another five minutes just going through this in detail, but we must press on. The notebook will generate two model endpoints. We'll need before moving on to our next section, which is our third section, building and deploying our Lambda functions. To do this, we'll need to set up an EC2 instance. I recommend setting up CentOS OS using this in the search bar, and then switching to the AWS Marketplace AMIs. Select t2.medium for our instance type, and then create a key value pair with RSA and .pem as the file format. And then you'll download the file format. And then create a security group with my IP, like shown here. Configure the storage to 30, and then launch the instance. Once it's set up, grab the public IP and SSH. Then SSH into your EC2 instance. There are quite a few things we need to do in our terminal that I'll breeze through here, like installing prerequisite packages and generic utilities like Docker, Docker Compose, Git, wget, Python, AWS CLI. And then finally, we need to configure our AWS CLI. For that, we'll need to go back to our AWS console, navigate to IAM, and then to security credentials, scroll down to access keys, and create new access key for the CLI. Grab your access key and secret, and we'll execute those with our region after we get back into our EC2 instance. Install Git, wget, Python, and the AWS CLI, Configure and then use that new key and secret we just created. Next, we'll actually build out the Lambda functions as a Docker container and then return back to the AWS console. We're going to build a Docker container and upload it to the ECR or Elastic Container Registry. 
Let's create a repository, give it a name, and keep it private. Create repo, and then click the view push commands. These commands are what we're going to commit next on our terminal. Making sure I'm in the Lambda folder as shown, let's execute those commands. This can take a little bit of time, so we'll speed this up. The cool thing is that back on your ECR page, you should have a container in your private repositories. Next, let's go use our new Docker image and finally create this Lambda function. Using a container image, name it, browse images, and select our image. Drop down the option for execution role and select create a new role from AWS policy templates, and then create a function. Time to point our Lambda function to our Redis database. Grab the host, port, and password, and we'll input that back into the AWS console. In configuration and environment variables, we'll add our host, port, and password, and save. That's it for this section. On to our fourth section, setting up Kinesis. Setting up Kinesis and adding it to our function takes less time, very little time, so let's do it. In Kinesis, create a data stream. After it's up and running back on our function, we're going to click Add Trigger. Search Kinesis, select it, search the name of your data stream, change the batch size to one instead of 100, and click Add. Now that we have a trigger connected to our function with Redis Cloud as our environment, or a database, when a new record arrives in the Kinesis data stream, it will immediately start the Lambda function. The Lambda function persists the transactions as they are arriving to the Redis Cloud database. It makes inferences to the SageMaker models to detect if a specific event is fraudulent or not. Finally, it persists the inference data back into our Redis Cloud database to drive real-time data visualization. And just like that, done with our fourth section. On to our fifth section, which is actually testing our solution. Let's get back to our terminal and back into our EC2 machine, and let's get into our Python environment. Let's install some dependencies, and then the exciting part, we'll actually simulate thousands of transactions as if they're happening in real time. Check this out. And this is what an individual record looks like that is getting pushed into our Kinesis data stream. Let's go look at it in the AWS console. Looking at our Lambda function, let's click the monitor tab. As you can see, we're processing some data here. The data stream we set up is working as intended, but this isn't super clear how the fraud detection is performing. So let's jump into our final section and see it visualized in Grafana. We're now looking at our fraud transaction score, which is basically a grade of how we're doing detecting fraud from the transactions coming in. On the right, we have a live view of how we're scoring. On the bottom left, a count of how much fraud is happening within a certain time period. And finally, on the right, fraud versus non-fraud scores. Well, that covers it for our lightning demo. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something new that Redis can do. I hope it pushes your curiosity to build something new with Redis. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.